Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. That's it. That's it. Let's praise him. Let's praise him as the old folks say, come on in the room. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome those of you who are connecting with us via Facebook Live. Welcome to those who are connecting with us on YouTube. Those of you who have connected physically in the spirit realm here in the body of Christ, we welcome you. No place better to be on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. than in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Before we get into the prayer and the scripture, I want to say happy Father's Day. And also just to remind us that according to the Emancipation Proclamation, freed slaves, people in the South in 1863, traditionally we celebrate that as July 4th. It was not enforced in many places until after the end of the Civil War in 1865, nearly two years later. The June 19th or Juneteenth celebration commemorates this important date in history that we should be reminded of. It is not just a day of slavery ended as a practice in the United States, but more specifically, the day Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation finally reached the last enslaved people. Therefore, on June 19, 1865, Major General Gordon Granger led U Union troops into Galveston to enforce the new executive order, giving freedom for all. Now, then, it was at least over 250,000 enslaved people in Texas became free. Amen. Today is June 19th, and Juneteenth we celebrate that. And after the nationwide protest of the police killings of black Americans, including George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, President Joe Biden signed the legislation that made Juneteenth a federal holiday in June 2021. Amen. Hallelujah. We wanted to recognize that and commemorate that time that we will all remember and reflect on that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we say welcome into the presence of the Lord. Amen. Welcome into God's house. The scripture this morning is John 8, 33 through 34. And it says that they answered him. We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves to anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, Verily, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a, now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you are free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you that what I have seen in my father's presence and you are doing what you have heard in your father. Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you that your word tells us that we are free, Lord Jesus, from the bondage of sin, O oh God. No longer bound, O oh God. No more chains holding us, O oh God. Our soul is resting and it's a blessing. Thank God. Thank God we're free in you, Father. We thank you for forgiving us of our sins and cleansing us from all unrighteousness, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross, oh God, and being crucified for us, oh God, that we may have a right, Lord Jesus, to the tree of life, that we may have a right, Lord Jesus, to worship in this house, to lift our hands in freedom, oh God, to clap our hands, oh God, and we thank and we praise you as we congregate together on this day, O oh God, to magnify your name and give you praise. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that your spirit is with us, O oh God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that your presence is here, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your anointing and your power, Lord, Lord Jesus. Lord, Lord, we thank Lord, you for the Lord, spirit Lord, of Lord, unity. Hallelujah. We thank you for the spirit of love and the spirit of grace, O oh God. Now, Father God, 
you do what you have already said you would do to us on this day. Use us mightily as we come together and worship your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, 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 two, one, two. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Carla mentioned a song, amen, that brought me back to the old school. Some of the brothers used to, like, I remember the deacon in the church, the Baptist church used to sing this one. That's B flat. It says, come on in the room. Come on in the room. Jesus is my doctor. He writes down all of my prescription. And he gives me all of my medicine in the room. Y'all remember that song? Can y'all help me sing? Oh, 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 say, come on in the room. Hey, come on in the room. Oh, Jesus is my doctor. And he writes down all of my prescriptions. And he gives me all of my medicine in the room. Minister T, I know you know something about that, don't you? Oh, come on. Come on in the room. Oh, Lord, yeah. come on in the room. Oh, Jesus is my doctor. And he writes down all of my prescriptions. And he gives me all of my medicine in the room. Let's do it one more time. Come on, come on. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Oh, Jesus is my doctor. And he writes down all of my prescriptions. And he gives me all of my medicine in the room. Then they would sing something like this. Oh, try Jesus. He's all right. Try Jesus. Oh, he's all right. Try Jesus. He's all right. I done tried him and he's all right. Try Jesus. He would say, he's all right. Try Jesus. He's all right. Try Jesus. He's all right. I done tried him and he's all right. Listen, must Jesus bear a cross along? And all the world go free. Hey, there's a cross for everyone, and there's a cross for me. Oh, try Jesus. You say he's all right. Try Jesus. He's all right. Try Jesus. He's all right. I done tried him and. He's, how about this one? He's a battle axe. Y'all know that? In the time of a battle, he's a battle axe. <laughs> time of a battle, he is a battle axe. In the time of a battle, shelter, shelter in the time of a storm. Oh, he is a battle axe. In the time of a he is a battle axe. In the time of a he is a battle axe in the time of a shelter, shelter in the time of war. Oh, he is a battle axe, you say, in the time of a He is a battle axe in the time of the battle. He is a battle axe in the time of the battle. Shelter in the time. Listen, oh, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. 
He is a battle axe oh, in the time. He is a battle axe in the time. He is a battle axe yeah. in the time. Shelter in the time. Oh, try Jesus. You say he's he's all right. Try Jesus. He's all right. Try Jesus. Yeah. He's all right. Oh, I done tried him and he's all right. 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 I done tried him for myself. I found out he's all right. He's all right. He's been all right. All of my life. So good. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. God Almighty, it's all right. the Lord is all right. It's all right. The Lord is all right. It's all right. Has He been good to you? It's all right. Has He been good to you? It's all right. He woke me up this morning it's all right. and He started me on my way. It's all right. He woke me up this morning. It's all right. He gave me food to eat, put right. a roof over my head, right. clothes to put on my body. It's all right. The Lord is all right. It's all right. The Lord is all right. The Lord is all right. He's all right. Yeah, he's all right. Yeah, he's all right. Can I get one witness? I say, can I get one witness? If the Lord's been good to you, you ought to cup your hands. If the Lord's been good to you, you ought to tell him thank you. Oh, he's all right. He's all right. The Lord's been good to me. I don't care what you may think. The Lord's been good to me. I don't care what you may think. He got me out of my bed and floated me in my right mind. He's been so good. The Lord is all right. Come on, clap your hands and give him praise. Woo! <laughs> I remember them thinking, singing these old songs. <laughs> Happy Father's Day to you and you and you and you, everybody out there. God bless you. Come on, praise team. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lord. Hey. All right. All right. He's all right. Oh. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We bless the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We see and we trust that there are a lot of those individuals who are not here this morning. Amen. Spending time with their fathers and families traveling. We pray their safety and their protection as they are yet, Lord. They're not physically here, oh God, but we trust that they'll be here with us in spirit amen we have a little tribute amen i was waiting for our pastor to come in but amen we're gonna go on amen hallelujah we're gonna go on with the tribute that we have prepared and set up amen for you all first as a as an act of commemorating and recognizing our fathers of new life christian fellowship let's give them a hand clap of praise and a shout out amen Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We can do better than that. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, amen. And maybe toward the end, our pastor will come in and still be a part of this particular tribute. Amen. Amen. I want to ask all of our fathers to please come here to the front to be recognized. All of our fathers and grandfathers and stepfathers. Amen. Amen. And surrogate fathers. Amen. And uncles and brothers and cousins and friends who've had to even fill in. Come to the front. Come, come. 
all the drummers and organists whose fathers. Is there something wrong with the sound, Mom? You was looking, amen, hallelujah. The sound may be a little loud, amen. Sometimes it's louder with the music, amen, than without. That's me, okay, amen. I'll tone it down a little bit as I can, amen, amen. We, we bless the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Look at that, y'all look at, somebody get a picture. I know we have to have a picture of this, amen. Yeah, you are, that's okay, that's all right. You come as you are, we appreciate you, amen. 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 We appreciate you all. It's hard to, I don't know if anybody knows, but it's kind of challenging to play the drums and the organ and musicians with a three-piece suit like D. You know, that's a little, can be a little tight. So don't worry about it. We still love you, Marcus, Ryan, all of our fathers here. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we have a little treat for you, just something we want to do to recognize our fathers. Um, as fathers build and manicure their homes, there's several tools that may come in handy for you all to use. So we've brought out some of those tools. Our first tool is a screwdriver, amen? A good father knows that when you screw up, amen, <laughs> you have to be sometimes be secured or secure those children back in place. And sometimes it goes, it may not go in straight, got to turn it back around. So when fathers, when our children don't do well and they screw up, just remember to take time with our children. Ephesians 4 and 13 through 6 says, until we all attain to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the ways and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning and by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way unto him who is the head, into, into Christ, for whom the body, for whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Amen. The next tool we want to give is our hammer. Sometimes a good father may have to come down <laughs> on the child and apply a little extra guided pressure and to pound them in the right way over and over. Now, you don't want to pound and hit your thumb, so you got to make sure you know that you're coming down the right way. Philippians 3, 12 through 14 says, I don't mean to say that I have already ach achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess the perfection for which Je Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end, the race, and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Amen. Our next tool is a shovel. A good father, you lucky I brought the little one instead of the big one. <laughs> it don't, a shovel is a shovel. A good father may have to come in and dig their children out of some ditches to help them and cause them their roots to go deep so that we can grow, so that our children can grow. So a good father will have a shovel so they can dig them out of those ditches that they get in sometimes. Colossians 2, 6 through 7 says, Therefore, as ye received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Our next tool that we have is a rake. Have, 
you ever heard the saying, being raked over coals? <laughs> well, a good father is commanded to discipline his children. And I've seen that through you, my brother. Disciplining and guiding your children. The word reads in Deuteronomy 8, 5 through 6. Think about it. Just as a parent disciplines a child, the Lord your God disciplines you for your own good. So obey the commands of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and fearing him. Amen. Hallelujah. Even if Dylan act like he don't fear you, you fear the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Our next tool that a father may use is a measuring tape. Okay. Amen. Now, now, if you pull that out, it can stretch wide and, and go long. And we know that it just popped up that it's so appropriate for Deacon because he stretches wide and long and reaches so many people around that with the evangelistic spirit that is on his life. And a good father is honest as he guides us with this measuring tape, <laughs> sometimes having to stretch us beyond where we think we should be beyond our ability knowing that sometimes he's able to go in places that everybody can't go in. Amen. Romans 12 and 3 says, because of the privilege and the authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Do not think better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourself, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. Amen. The next tool is this level or the scale. A good father always seems to help find balance in our lives. I know Deacon Rogers has balance with his wife and his children and his grandchildren in the home and his son and his daughter and even finding the balance as his mother-in-law is going through her challenging times, and we lift up Sister Thornton, amen, during these times. It's important that you, my brother, remain balanced during these trying times in your life. Proverbs 11 and 1 says, the Lord detests the use of dishonest scale, but he delights in accurate weights, amen. The next tool we have is a pruner or a trimmer, a cutter. Ah, a cutter. A cutter. Sometimes, you know, I, we talk, Chris and I talk about our children, and sometimes we might cut them in a way. And because we can exchange that information, we have to cut them and prune them from time to time. And the, although a Children may be zealous and grow up and want to get out and do things and try to do things beyond their capabilities. A good father knows when to cut back. A good father knows when to hold them and fold them, amen. A good father knows when to prune them, but understanding is for the purpose of rebuilding, for the purpose of growth and more uh, being produced, amen. John 15 and 2 says, he cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit. And he prunes the branches to bear fruit so they will produce even more fruit. Amen. The next tool we have are goggles. Mm. Mm. You see, I didn't know who was going to get what tool, but... God knows that, you know, we look at Brother Marty as he comes in and he sits quietly and he doesn't maybe make a whole lot of noise, but we know that he's watching and he's seeing as a father and as a grandfather still watching, even going through his own personal health issues and challenges that he sees and he's protecting them and protective over them. So a good father helps protect the eyes, amen to do so that they can properly see during these times when the debris is flying all around. Because when you're working and you're serving, sometimes the fallout gets you and could injure your eyes. So a good father ensures he has that protection 
so that he can continue to see how to lead and to guide his family. Matthew 6 and 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Amen. Amen. Bishop, he came in right on time. Isn't it perfect? Amen. We're at the end. Come on up, Bishop. I'm going to have you stand right in the center between Deacon Sutton and Minister Sherwood. Hallelujah. God is so good. Isn't he good? Isn't God so good and so wonderful? We might have to ask y'all to tighten up just to get this picture because this is a beautiful photo. Amen. Amen. So the last tool that we have to give recognition to our fathers, amen, for the father of this house, for the shepherd of this house, amen, hallelujah, amen. So the last tool that we have as we have given all the tools out is the power cord. A good father knows how to use the power cord and keep us connected to the source. Amen? Of all those tools, of all those things we need, we really need to be connected to the source. Now, a good father knows about the shovels and the hammers and the rakes and all of that, but we must be connected to the power source. 1 Corinthians 13 and 13 says, Now abideth faith, hope, and charity, these three, but the greatest, no matter whether you have a screwdriver, a hammer, a shovel, a rake, a measuring tape, a leveler, a pruner, or goggles, no matter what, we must stay with the power source. But the greatest of all these gifts, the greatest of all these tools is the gift of love. Amen. The greatest of these is love. Happy Father's Day. May you richly be blessed on this special day. Amen, amen, and amen. T said, get close. She's trying to get the squeeze in a little bit. Amen. I better get my tools back. <laughs> she better my tools. Amen. Praise God. Let us give the Lord a hand of praise, amen, for that wonderful tribute to all fathers. So poignant and so relative. I really appreciate the, uh, the tribute, amen, as she described all of the tools, amen. It was so appropriate and, and how Bishop came in and with that one last item. Amen. Knowing that, that, that that's our chief. Amen. The, we know the, who the chief cornerstone is. It's Jesus. Let's, let's not mistake that. But amen. We thank God for the man of God who God has placed here in our presence on earth. Amen. Who is, who's, got the, who's connected to the power source. And on today, amen, I want to wish you once again to all fathers, those of you who are watching via Facebook and YouTube, those that are in the presence of a new life, happy Father's Day to all of you. God bless you on today. Praise team, let us go on. And start the song says this, I feel like going on. Anybody feel like going on today? Hallelujah. I feel like going on. Though trials come on I feel like going on. If you believe that, come on and join us and sing it together. I feel, come on, everybody say, I feel like going on. 
So I don't care where you are in life today. You got to keep, you got to remain this high. They may have counted you as nothing, but though trials come, though trials come on every side, hard on every side, you got to, I feel, I like, feel like going on. Somebody needs to hear that just one more time. I feel like going on, I feel like going on. Mother Eloise, in spite of what your life might have been through, you got to keep the faith and feel like going on. I feel like going No matter where you've been in life, you got to keep the faith. Well, try us, no try. It's come to make you strong. It has built you this far. I feel like yeah. I remember my grandmother saying something like this. I feel like pressing my way. Anybody feel like pressing today? Oh, I feel like pressing my way. The trials come. That's it, brother. On every side, oh, I feel like pressing my way. Come on, help me sing it. I feel like pressing my way. Oh, oh, oh. I feel like Hallelujah. pressing my way. Anybody feel like pressing today? I feel like I feel like pressing. Yeah, yeah. I'm in a pressing mode. Though trials come, though trials they'll come on every side. On every hey, side. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, come on, show us. I feel like I feel like yeah. I feel a pressing yeah. me this morning. I feel like pressing through. Oh, I feel like I pressing feel like pressing through. me this morning. I feel like pressing. Oh, I feel like I feel a pressure. I feel like I said I feel a pressure. Like Hallelujah. Pressing. Oh, bless your name, God. Though trials come, though trials, they come on every side. On every Hallelujah, God bless you. I feel like going on, I feel like, say, I feel like going on. I'm I determined, I'm determined, I'm determined, I'm yes, determined to move on. Yes, I, I feel do. like, hallelujah, going on. Though trials come. Go trials, go trials. I feel like, I feel like going on. Well, come on, let's make the devil mad. Let's sing it one more time. I feel like going on. I feel like That's good, that's good. Oh, come on, come on, sing it if you really feel like doing it. I feel like going on. The trials come, the trials the what come on every side. The trials, yes, it is. The trials come, the trials on every hand. Hallelujah! I feel, I feel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, we praise your name. 
Come on, let's lift it up. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. There you go. Hallelujah. Any worship yes, is in the house. Hallelujah. Bless your brother. Ooh, Any worship is in the house. Oh Lord, we praise your name. Let's give him all the glory. All the glory. All the glory. Give him all of the praise. All the praise. Yes. Oh Lord, praise your name. Oh, come on, come on. Let's sing it again. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yay. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him all of the glory. All the glory. All the glory. Yeah, the space starts. Yeah. There you go. All the praise. Can't be going that long. Oh, Lord, we praise your Come we on, sing let's again. sing it again. Oh, say hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, last time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. Got your high and you lifted up today. Give him all the glory. All the glory. All the praise. Yeah. All So here we are, God, lifting you up and giving you praise. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. We give you glory and honor and the doobie on your name. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. From the rising of the sun into the going down of the same. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. Come on, lift him up in the house. Lift him up in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. I forgot the track. Sorry. Hallelujah, you're worthy to be praised. Come on, put your hands together like this. Come on, come on. If you're at home, come on, get up out of your seat, get up out of your bed, and just let's lift him up and magnify the Lord in the house. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Come on, come on. Hey, hey, yeah. Here we go. Everybody, one, two, three, let's say hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. You got to say, say hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Let's do that just one more time. Come on, come on, clap your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Y'all sound good, man. Oh, hallelujah. All right, here we go. I lift my hands. Say, I lift, say, I lift my hands. I praise you, Lord. I bow my head. 
Sound good. I praise you, Lord. Y'all got it. Yeah. I bow my head. I Come honor on. you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, 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 Your hey, word hey, is hey, to hey. pray. Hey. So hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Your Lord. word is to be praised. Dig, we sound good. Say it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, I lift my hands, say, I lift my hands, I praise you, Lord. I bow my head, I honor you, I lift my hands, I lift my hands, I praise you, Lord. I bow my head, I bow my head, I honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You're worthy to be praised. Somebody sing it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Good God. You're Look at your mother, boy. Look at her. Your mother. I lift my hands. Come on, say, say. I lift my hands. I praise you, Lord. Yeah. I bow my head. I honor you. I lift my hands. I lift my hands. I praise you, Lord. Y'all sound good today. God bless you. I bow my head. I honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all worthy to be praised. Good God bless you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. I said it's Father's Day. Yes, sir. Oh, hallelujah. I said it's Father's Day. Can we do it one more time? I know I've messed up. I've messed up. Good Lord. He did. Hey. It's Father's Day. Come on, come on, come on. Put your hands together. Pray. Come on, let's give him a Father's Day praise. Come on, let's make some joyful noise in the house. Hey, good God Almighty. I hear you, Sister Cynthia. Come on, here we go. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, worthy, hallelujah, hallelujah, we praise your name, hallelujah, hallelujah, you're worthy, hey, hallelujah, Lord, Lord, we lift you up, hallelujah, you're worthy, that's it, Doc, hallelujah, we praise your name, hallelujah, hallelujah, so worthy, hey, Lord, hallelujah, Lord, Lord, we oh, hallelujah, you up. hallelujah, you're worthy, come on, clap those hands, hallelujah, Singing today, God hallelujah, bless you. Hallelujah, we pray today. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, so worthy. Hey. Hallelujah. Lord. Lord hallelujah. Praise and praise him in the house. Let's lift him up and magnify the name of the Lord. He is a strong tower, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah, you're worthy. Hallelujah, we praise your name. Hallelujah, so worthy. Man, y'all sound good today. Hallelujah. Lord, Lord, we hallelujah. Lord, we lift you up. We extend our praise. Lord, we lift you up. 
for the rest of our days. You're mighty in battle. And we install you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Oh, hallelujah. out of your bed today. Get up out of that kitchen and begin to magnify God wherever you are in your house today. Praise Him and give Him glory. Woo. Oh, we bless your name, God. Yeah, yeah. Last time. Oh, hallelujah. to magnify the Lord in your home today. I dare you to get up out of your bed. I dare you to give him a praise. Give him what he's deserved today. Oh, hallelujah. I appreciate you. I appreciate that. Yeah, say, Lord, we lift you up. Come on, say. Lord, we lift you up. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. He is worthy of all of our praise. God, we bless your name today. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Dana is going to lead us into this worship song, and we got one more song before the man of God comes on today. We appreciate you, amen, taking the time, amen, to worship God with us. As I keep reiterating, we are not entertainers. We're here to worship God for ourselves. And all we're here to do is to encourage you, you, those of you that are sitting in this pew today, amen, to invoke God's presence. Amen. We just want to encourage you. We're not here to entertain and to make you dance and to make you shout. Amen. We're here to encourage that. But we're doing all of that to give the man upstairs, they, they, like they like to say, the man upstairs, God, Jehovah Jireh, our praise. He's wide as the sky. Sister Dana, God bless you. Lord, we 
Hi. 
Come on, it's Father's Day. That's it, Bishop. Give God a I praise. said it's Father's Day. Hallelujah. Glory, Amen. glory, glory. Father's Day. <laughs> Come on. Father's Day. That's, That's what Father's we came Day. to do. We came Father's to give Day. God all the glory belongs to him today. Hey!
Vamos a ver. Aleluya. Lord, you worthy. church now come on come on don't stop now come on now what's wrong come on come on and give him some praise come on give him your best father day oh, yeah. I dare you to give him your best father day bless you bless you bless you come on give him your best father day give. clap your hands open up your mouth and get the father of creation yes sir a Father Day, an appreciation. Oh, my, 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 my. Come on, somebody. Glory, glory. On Father's Day. Yes, sir. The absolute Father. The Father of glory. Well. The Father of hope. Yeah, yeah. The Father of my strength. Oh, yeah. Come on and give him praise. We give you praise. Man, there's a song I like to hear. Our Father. I'm a father. Yes, sir. We had that on the list. Had on the list? <laughs> yes. We, we were just trying to be obedient to the time. Yes, sir. Yeah. Bless God. I'm a father. I was, I was, I don't mean to pick up my, my, my family back here, 
I saw, I saw Big Chris praising God. I saw little Chris Baby Bear praising God and Mama Chris Baby. And little Chris, their hands ended up. Well, you better get your hands up. <laughs> I had to mess with him, stroke him a little bit, you know. Yeah. I had to remind him that even though you see, the, 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 the thing that really begins to wonder is our hearts. Wonders. You know where you're at. You're in church. When you're in church, we get in here and we try to soak up the atmosphere. There's something good in this place. I said there's something good in this place. Even if you don't bring something good, there's something good still here. So if you happen to be in a situation where you broke down and busted, it's all right. There's something still good in this place. I dare somebody lift up their hands for a minute and say, there's something good in this place. Something good in this place. Say, that good thing I'm going to get today. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. That good thing I'm going to get today. I ain't leaving here. Shantan, I ain't leaving here without that good thing today. My mama, my grandmama told me there's something good in the church. There's something good about Jesus. I come here this morning to get that good thing. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh. Get that good thing this morning. So we say this. How Father. We describe you. You are whole. But we do what? Well, we give you glory as we bless your name. Our Father. He's about that. Say our Father. Our Father. Come on, saints. You are holy. That's right there. We give you glory as we bless your name. Your name. Your name. Our Father. Our Father. You are what? Got it. Come on, describe you him. You are holy. We give you what? With our mouth, our father, our father, our father, our father, you are holy. You are holy, and we give you. We give you glory. Oh God, start to pick up something now. Our father, our father, it's starting to pick up some you distinction. Are holy. You are holy. Make it personal. Make it personal. Come on, make it personal. Yeah. Our Father, our Father, you, oh, yeah. you are holy. Oh, we give you love. Oh. Here we go. Here we go.
give him this morning? We give, give you glory. glory. As we bless your name. From the fruit of your lips. Your name. Your name, your name is That's holy. It. That's it. Holy your yeah. We give you glory. We give you today my my emotions are kind of all over the place for various reasons human beings are complex are complicated somebody say amen to that amen. said my outfit might look seamless but my life and my mind and who I am is quite complicated it is Father's Day Father's Day in certain communities can be very controversial. Certain communities. There was a time, Santana, I, on Father's Day, not long ago, I waited to see how many of my biological or spiritual children or people that I had just made a difference, I hope, in their life. I watched Facebook and I watched my phone to see them chime in. I waited for all of them. I look all the way to nighttime. I know you didn't do that. Somehow or another, 
it, it would only be my son to be the last one to, to say something. And the interesting thing about that today is I, I really don't care too much who says Happy Father's Day or, or don't. It's just not important to me. It's not really important today. And I, I say that to, because um, for several reasons. It, it's like, it's like the, the people that you long to say happy something to you, they can say it, but there are people that you wish could say it, they no longer can't say it anymore. I'll say it again. If you live long enough, the people that you long to say a certain thing to you, you might live through a, a, a time that becomes inopportune where the thing that you desire to hear from them, they can't say no more. So, so today is kind of complicated for me because, because even though I know some people can say happy Father Day there, there's one that I know he won't be able to say it because he's no longer, he no longer exists in this dimension. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Another reason why Father's Day is complicated for me because I didn't have the ideal setup, as you would say. My, my father, although he was the progenitor, meaning that it was his seed commingled with my mother's egg that produced me, he just didn't have the benefit or the appreciation of, of seeing me raised from the time I was a child until I became a grown man. So it's conflicted for me. And, uh, and you know what? A lot of people, if the truth be told, got a lot of daddy issues. I see a lot of folks walk around here with daddy issues. And I, I, I was trying to approach, I said, Father, well, what, what do I say today? Because I'm a father that have, has conflict. Conflict because my son won't be able to say happy Father's Day, and I don't really care. I, I've got, I, let's say I do care, but I've matured. Somebody said matured. Uh, what I mean, I'm, 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 I'm tempered now. You're saying happy or not saying happy, don't make or break me no more. Don't make or break me no more. I mean, I'm not sitting there just waiting on you to make my day. You can't make or break my day. You can, cert you can certainly discolor it, but at the, at the end of it, I know where I can go get my help from. I want you to hear me this morning. So, so then the other aspect of, 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 um, of Father's Day, because, because of knowing, knowing that I, he didn't, he didn't experience the, the benefit of being there with me, and seeing me grow and mature, and, and he didn't get the opportunity when the enemy came in to, to harm me. To, he wasn't there to protect me. So the enemy hurt me when I was young. So when, when, we, when we talk about fathers and we talk about celebrating fathers, most of us have conflict. And even, watch this, even, listen to me, even if you say that your father has been everything to you, but unfortunately, in some instances, he's no longer here. You say, he everything to me, but he's dead now. No. Or, or sometimes some fathers have been their record has been spotless and all of a sudden one one lack one lack of, of moral clarity and throws everything out the window so the hero that you thought was your father your, the one that you lifted up in worship now you look at him as no, no different than the, than the Negroes you've been messing with so a lot of people here today have some issues about fathering and for those that that, that that never had the, the understanding or the appreciation of the father and then you got saved and God became your father and then, then sometimes when you called on him it appeared that he didn't listen to you you struggle in that area too and so God said to me there and then there's, and there's some of us like me I was raised by a mother my me and my two sisters Judge Bogan and myself and hope you were raised by a single parent a matriarch and for some of you you don't have to be a mother you don't have to be a father but you can find yourself in the journey of life fathering people. I ain't going to help nothing. What, what am I saying? No, no, you can't be a father, but you can be put in a situation where they need fatherly counsel. That means that, watch this, if you're a girl, you got to change your girly hat. 
I ain't saying, I'm not saying change your femininity. I'm not saying change your gender. I'm saying if you're dealing with a boy, if you're dealing with a man child, you got to be able to understand that you cannot pour into him femininity and think you'll get the right response out of him. So you, in those times, you got to ask God for the grace that some masculinity could come into you that it won't change you from being a woman, but you need to pour into him like a man. Ain't nobody getting no help in here. So I, I, I asked God, I said, well, help me this morning. Talk to the people. God said, I'm going to help you this morning. I'm going to help you this morning. I'm so glad this morning. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. That I got a real father I can talk to when I have a need. They were, we, were, we were playing, we were at Top Golf yesterday. It was wonderful. As pastor of the church, I had nothing to do with setting it up. They did all the setting up. I just, and I even got there late. It was all set up. It was wonderful. This, this, this multiplex place, it was beautiful. The food was great. And the golfing, and of course, I hit the ball the straightest and the longest. I did. It's That's the true. truth. I'm just so grateful to my father. I am grateful to my earthly father. But there were some lessons he never got that he could never share with me. We never, there's certain talks. Somebody say talks. You know that there's some talks you should have had with your father. There's some talks you should have had with your mother. There's some talks you should have with God. But you didn't have. Well, God said, I want you to give them the talk this morning. Somebody said, we're going we're gonna to have the talk this morning. And I, I, I began to bless God this morning. I began to shout and praise him because you know what? He gave me what I needed. Yesterday was saying, man, you're going to you hit that ball right. Mother Bernadette talking about, well, you better come here and make sure you preach this morning. They wasn't messing around. But that, that pressure, that I, got, I felt that, Ryan, I felt that pressure. I was confused. Why? Because you understand, listen, you're not looking at an ideal father. You're not looking at an ideal pastor. You're not looking at an ideal husband. It, I'm not an ideal nothing. Say I'm it, just Dr. saved Dr. by grace. Say it, sir. Say it, Bishop. Ain't nothing ideal about me. So I approach these critical, these critical subjects with reverence, awe, and need. I need God to help me see my way through the passage that you don't see my flaws but you're able to see my humanity and able to pick up the difference between spirituality and my humanity and you can tap into what God wants you to hear from the text not from my experience it's not my experience is going to win the victory in your life it's the word somebody say the word my experience can can give you give you a sense that where you are at God realizes it you're not by yourself somebody say I'm not by myself God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask for. Them. Males, a male child needs a father to affirm him. A young woman needs a male to show her what a father's love is like before she begins to look for love in all the wrong places. And listen, there ain't no, you can't go to the grocery store or to the pharmacy or to your shrink and get a supplement for a father. See, we live in a world today that folk think that you can live without fathers and live without mothers. The devil is a liar. Just like you can't put up no building without no cement, you can't really build children or people's lives without a male and a female representation. And the representation has to be consistent. Has to be consistent and it has to be sacrificial. And it has to be godly. For without that, we have chaos. Somebody said we're going to have a talk today. In the book of Proverbs chapter 3, scholars point to King Solomon as the author of Proverbs in the Bible. Solomon is Israel's wisest king. We, 
We find in 1 Kings 4 and 32 that Solomon wrote over 3,000 Proverbs. He wrote over 1,000 songs. We know from previous chapter in 1 Kings chapter 3 that Solomon had prayed to God for wisdom. He prayed for understanding or he prayed for an understanding heart that he might be able to judge the people. He wanted to be able to he wanted to be able, the Joyce, to discern between good and bad. And God was so pleased by the prayer that he gave Solomon what he didn't even ask for. And he gave him more. He also promised Solomon even more if he lived up to the standards that he had set. God said to him, because thou hast asked this thing and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither has asked riches for thyself, nor has asked the life of thine enemies, but has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I've done according to thy words. Lo, I've given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there were none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I've also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all the days of thy life that thou walk in my ways and to keep my statutes and my commandments as your father david did walk then i will lengthen your days that's first kings chapter 3 11 through 14. solomon didn't write all of the book of proverbs he most he wrote the majority of it who was solomon i'm just giving you a brief over before we get in the text he was a king and he was the son of a king. His mother's name was Bathsheba. He was a byproduct of, of, of a, a relationship that was adulterous. He was the third king of Israel. He reigned for over 40 years. He lived to be about 60 years old, according to Jewish antiquities. He probably led Israel around 9, 970 to 931 B.C., he also established God's first temple in Israel. And Solomon was very wealthy and he was wise. These are the things that God promised him. He said, much also came before because he was the son of David. Much of what is recorded about King Solomon comes from the first 11 chapters of 1 Kings in the Bible in the second book of Chronicles. He became king of Israel while his father was still alive. Solomon also had older brothers. Even though Solomon was rich and very wise, and had the favor of God, he had many wives. The Bible records that he had almost a thousand wives or 600 concubines or 600 wives and 300 concubines. One of his downfalls was going after other gods. And God warned him about this. In 1 Kings eleven nine, 9, the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned. And that's what I said to Chris a little while ago. Chris, you know where you're at. When I go to my mother's house, no matter how old I was, I knew where I was at. I was not to go in my mother's house with my hat on. I don't care if I did pay $500 for my hat. Oh, come on and walk with me, somebody. I knew where I was at. I knew I couldn't go in my mother's house and, and speak with such language that was profanity. I knew where I was at. And I knew if I went to church, I knew I wasn't going to church just to sit there and look cute or like some model. I had to put my hands together and give God some thanks. But what all these done for me? It's my experience. Amen. The book of Proverbs, Proverbs is mainly about wisdom. The book will make either you wise or not. But you got to read and study it. Proverbs 1 through 7 lays down the foundation that wisdom principles about wisdom. It describes how great it is to have wisdom and the benefit of getting wisdom. To know wisdom, Proverbs 1, 2 to 5 says, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to perceive the instruction, the wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give subtly to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase in learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. And this is the book that we're going to be speaking out of today. Throughout the book, wisdom is praise. In Proverbs 31, it highlights what a virtuous woman is. So, so this book is a, an appropriate book that we should get into the day and you say why should we read this book as christians we are always growing and trying to please god and the, by the way we conduct ourselves the book of proverbs is instrumental in teaching christians how to conduct themselves somebody said the talk somebody said we're gonna have a talk this morning 
So in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 through 35, you know, whenever you're having a talk with somebody, it could be kind of lengthy. So I want you to bear with me. There are a lot of scriptures. Normally, you don't give a lot of scriptures, but I want you to hear the, the basis of this talk. Because watch this. You might get in a situation. And see, one of, the, one of the major malfunctions of, of our society, and I don't, I'm not just talking about American society. I'm talking about the human society. Is, is, is we, we, we are, we are ill-equipped to make certain selections at certain seasons in our lives. Uh, our, our world wouldn't be so jacked up if we just could make the right selection on woman or man, you know. Man, God, how is, it, how is it that, how is it that we, the very thing that, that could make or break us, we get wrong. 50% of all marriages end in divorce. 50, it's the numbers high, and, and watch this, in, in our community, most of the people of our community, our color, 75% of that community is ran by a woman. There's no man in sight. Joanne told me when she worked as a police officer in Sulphur Springs, there was no males 18 years old and above in the whole community. There were just babies, little boys, little girls, and mothers, no father or no male figures at all. I remember that. And so we realize that there is a problem in our world. The scriptures say if, if the foundation is gone, then the righteous don't stand the chance. If the father is not where he should be, and I mean, I don't mean that I don't mean that just from a philosophical standpoint, but he needs to be there spiritually. Yeah. He needs to be there mentally. And by God, he needs to be there materially. That's what the Father's role is. He is the provider, the protector, the progenitor. He's not just somebody that's creating a child but he's there for the incomplete duration of this child's existence. Good bishop. Amen. And so how is it that we get that wrong? We have babies from people later on that we should have never even kissed. How is it that we have... And so the child grows up in a home where there's constant strife and conflict, not love. So he lose sight of how to treat a woman. And if there are any young women there, she don't know how to treat a man. And so on Mother's Day, we could sing, I always love my mama. She's my baby girl. Only get one, you only get one girl. But we ain't got no songs for daddy. Wherever he laid his head was his home. And when he died, all he left us was alone. Those are the songs they have for us. And then, and then we know it's true, and we try to put a suit over it and dress it up like we ain't been that bad. Help us, Holy Ghost. I'm so glad. That's why I said, even though I'm going to get some calls, I got some calls. And Gloria, bless you. We have a, a, a sister, a Spanish sister was going to this church, I think maybe 15 years ago. There's not been one Father's Day. She has not reached out and said, Happy Father's Day. Not one. So if you're watching, thank you so much. It means the world to me. Amen. But as I said, I'm conflicted because... I myself has not been the ideal father. And I can't make any excuses because I didn't have an ideal father. The fact of the matter is, you ain't been ideal either in your own state of whoever you are. And the reason why you have not been ideal is because your nature has not always been consistent with doing what's right. You have a nature that conflicts with what's right. Your nature is, 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 um, is damaged or your nature is is corrupt that's that sinful nature 
And because you have a sinful nature, the Bible says in the book of, in the book of uh, Romans chapter 6, even when you want to do good, sin is always present. I want to be a good man. I don't want to cheat on my wife, but sin is always present. The thing that I would do, I do. I don't do. The thing that I hate to do, that's what I do. Now I know it's not me to do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of sin? Thanks be unto God. You, you see, I don't care who you are and what you wear. You're always going to have an issue with your nature. Somebody said we're going to have a talk this morning. Because watch this. There might come a time where you're looking for fatherly advice and there's no fathers present. And all the fathers in your family are they all weak or in jail. Ain't got no spine, ain't got no money, ain't got no good credit. Isn't it sad today that the children don't even know they got bad credit? Somebody laughed at that. I mean, she know what I'm talking about. Isn't it bad today that children don't even know that they, if, they, if somehow or another they would, they would go from 5 to, to 25, they couldn't get nothing in their name? Somebody said, well, why? Why can't I get Because your mom and your auntie use your name. They use your name. Guess, they don't care whether it's against the law or not. They use their name because they had misused their name. Let's read the text. It says, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Someone said, we should have a talk. He said, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, son, daughter. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance, my son, my daughter. We're having a talk. Somebody said we're just having a talk. With the first fruit of all thine increase. Why, daddy? Why? 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 Here's why. So shall thy bonds be filled with plenty. And thy presses shall burst out with new wine. He caught that. What else? We get? Daddy, daddy, what else? What's more? I want more talk. Daddy, okay, I'm going to give you some more talk. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Neither be weary of his correction. We're just having a talk. Why, daddy? Why should I get mad when daddy, when bishop, when, when they correct me? Why, why should I get pissed off and walk out? Why? I'm going to tell you why. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. So, so if he don't correct you, that means he don't love you. So don't get so caught up in the fact that he rebuked you or he corrected you. And the correction was embarrassing. The correction exposed you uh, like you've never been exposed before. He did it because he loved you. I can tell you by the time he exposed me. That I didn't want to be exposed, but he did it because he loved me. Even as the father, the son in whom he delighted, happy is the man that findeth wisdom and man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things that can thy desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. Somebody said, we're just having a talk. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She's a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth, by understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Somebody said, we're just having a talk. Watch this. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Then shall thou walk in thy way safely and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. 
on your phone. I, I, get, I get worried at night. I get, you, know. you need to talk. Somebody said, whenever, whenever I'm struggling with something, I just need to talk. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be what? Sweet. Remember what the Father tells you. When the enemy comes against you like a flood, you can't sleep. Remember what the Father says. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when they're coming. Why, Daddy? Why? Why should I be? For the Lord shall be what? Shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due. Child, daughter, son, when it's in thy power of thine hand to do it. Why? Say not to thy neighbor, go and come again, and tomorrow I'll give when thou hast it by thee. Don't do that, son. Why? He says, devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. Strive not with a man without cause. If he done thee no harm, envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. For the fraud is abomination to the Lord, but the secret is with the righteous. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. But he blessed the habitation of the just. Surely he scorneth the scorners, but they, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. Last verse, the wise shall inherit the glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. So for the scriptures, we're just going to have a talk. Somebody said we're having a talk. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, some of them never had the opportunity to have a talk with their biological mother or father because they're orphans. Some knew their daddy, but they never had a talk with him because he was never sober. Some knew their daddy, or they thought he was their daddy, but they never had a blood test, so they didn't know who their daddy was, so they never had to talk. Some knew their daddy, but their daddy didn't want to have nothing to do with them, and God, they never had this talk. Some have gotten born again and still have daddy issues. Help us through this conversation today be healed. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Someone clap their hands if you believe you're going to have a talk. Come on and clap your hands if you believe you're going to have a talk. Come on and clap those hands if you believe. You'll have a talk. Amen. I, as I said, it, was, it took me a little while to really come to a place of, of just really trying to figure out what it was I was going to talk to you about this morning because of my own challenges. Hello, somebody. Oh, wow, that happened so quick. I said because of my own challenges. Look at your neighbor and say, do you have challenges? So I had, I had my own set of issues that I, I had to deal with. When you talk about, when you talk about preaching to people about a subject that they're staring at you in the mirrors, you're looking right in the mirror at your own human shortfalls. As I said earlier, um, it, it, it was easy to to preach on Father's Day, as long as all my kids were alive. Now I've lost one of my kids. It's not that easy anymore. I, I remember because when my father was uh, still alive, he lost a few of his kids. And, it, and it's something about a, a, a parent. It changes your perspective on life when you lose a child. Because you lose them, uh, 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 however they get lost, if they get lost to uh, suicide, drugs, or murder, whatever, it is always that they were lost too soon, which means, watch this, somehow or another, whatever it is you shared with them, they didn't hold on to it. So watch this. So the first point I want to bring out to you today about this talk, which is critical, don't forget it. Write that down. Say, don't forget the talk. Come on, walk with me today. Don't forget to talk. See, see, you might be in a different state. You might be with a different boyfriend. You might be a different girlfriend. You might be a different wife. You might be on a different job. But watch this. If you remember the talk, it'll set you free. I said, if you remember the talk, it'll bring you back in alignment. Any, anybody hear what I'm saying? I ain't getting no, you're going to make me shout in here in a minute. He said, watch this. What, never forget 
what he taught you. Now, you can say, well, my father ain't never taught me. I understand that. Now, now, so if your daddy ain't never taught you, God is trying to teach you something through this particular Proverbs in chapter 3. If you never had a father, watch this. He's trying to tell you, don't worry, I'm your father. I am your father. I wish I had a witness in here. And he said, the first thing I want to tell you about you and me is the stuff that I tell you. I don't want you to ever forget it. Don't forget what I tell you. And those, uh, those that have fathers, those children that have fathers, they tell you, oh, my father said this, and my father said that, and my father said this, and my father said that, especially if they had good fathers. Well, you ought to start telling folk what your father said. I, am I in the church this morning? I said, am I in the church this morning? I ain't talking about your drunk daddy. I ain't talking about your old whole mom and father. I ain't talking about the father that, that, that said that, he wasn't sure you was his or not, and you wouldn't even get a you wouldn't even get a DNA test so that you wouldn't live the rest of your life confused. I'm talking about your father of creation. He said, Don't forget what I tell you. And why does he say that? I tell you, it's right there in the text. He says, Watch this. It's almost like responsive reading. How many know responsive reading in the in the Baptist church? You read one scripture, they read the next. He says, okay, we're going to do a little responsive reading. He says, listen, my son, forget not my law. He said, don't forget my law. Don't want you to get my law. And he says, and the reason why, he says, watch this. He says, he says I want you to let the law stay in your heart. And he says, if you do that, son, it will add length of days to your life. He said, it will not only add length of days, but it will give you a life of peace. And he said, and shall add to thee. He said, watch this. He said, if you listen to what I've said, if you don't forget my law and you keep my commandments. I wish I had a, I wish I had a praying church here this morning. He said, if you never forget to do what I've taught you, he said, watch this. You're going to live a long life. Who am, I, who am I walking with? See, see, we got folk right here today, they're scared, they're, they're worried. They're reach, reach, like I'm, I'm, I'm 67, and you get a certain age, you're worried because your mama died at 68. Your daddy died at 70. So you're looking at your life, well, maybe I ain't got but a few more years left. Hey, stop that. You need to have the talk. Somebody said, did you have the talk? I don't care how long my mama lived. I don't care how long my daddy lived. Yes, I'm connected to them than my DNA. But guess what? My daddy gave me another talk. And my daddy gave me a talk. He said if I keep his word and put it in my heart, they will add years to my life. And I went back to my dad and I told him, you know what? My natural father died early. He said, don't worry about your natural daddy. He said, I rule life. I'm in charge of life. I run it. And I'm telling you, and so watch this. If you find yourself, woman of God, in a situation where you're talking to your nephew, woman of God, you find yourself talking to your brother, woman of God, you find yourself talking to your grandson, and you realize he's, he done lost his way. He done lost a sense of direction. You need to remind him of this talk right here. Don't bring up the fact he ain't had no father. You know he ain't got no father. He know he ain't got no father. But guess what? Jesus, the Bible says, when your mother and father shall forsake you, then he'll pick you up. So every now and then, you might have to put the hat on of a man. And you got to tell your son, look, don't forget the lessons, especially the biblical ones that I taught you. Oh, and get, see, ain't nobody shouting in here. Ain't nobody shouting in here. See, 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 watch this. Everything that he's talking about has to deal with the heart. Somebody said the heart. Isn't that something? Everything that he's, he's talking about, you know, because, because that's what the seat of the emotions are. You know, see, people say, I'm submitted to my husband. Yeah, that's just in word. See, you could say you're submitted, but in, in your heart, you're still standing up. And, and, and what I'm talking about, the first thing that begins to drift in people of God's life is their heart. You start forgetting. See, 
I, when, 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 I, when I start forgetting those important statements and lessons that kept me, that, that were the foundation for my life, it's because, watch this, I began to wander from those things. They no, longer, they no longer have the same meaning and value to me anymore. I wish I had a witness in here. And, and, and when we get in trouble, it's because we forgot what we were made of. We forgot what they put in us. I wish I had a witness in here. You forgot the ABCs of your faith. Let thine heart keep my commandments. Write them upon the table of your heart. English pastor and commentator Charles Bridges said, the heart is the first thing that wanders from God and the first thing that returns. God desires obedience from the heart, and he greatly rewards true submission to him and his word. Certainly it is better to obey God outwardly than not to obey God at all. But the Father delights in a heart that is inwardly surrendered to him. Anybody hear what I'm saying? The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11, Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. It is not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes. Thy God. So you've got to be careful not to forget the things that you've learned. Most of the trouble, uh, the joys we got into, why? Is because we turned a deaf ear to the things that we learned. Come on, you, you know, so I said, don't mess with her. Don't mess with them. They ain't no good. You can smell them when they're coming. Come on, walk with me, somebody. There needs to be a level of discernment. And, 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 uh, and when you see people, you know, them, you know that crowd you ain't got no business being with. You lay down with dogs, you're going to get up with fleas. So the first thing I've got to, I've got to, I got to make sure, watch this. I got to make sure. I don't forget what God taught me. So I said, I don't forget what he taught me. And number two, watch this. Number two, number two. I got to trust God completely. That's the talk. See, see, um, you got to tell, tell your kids, hey, look here. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you get into. You got to trust God. You got to trust him in everything, in every way possible. That's what the scripture says in Proverbs chapter 3. Trust in the Lord. How? Mommy, how much you trust in him? It, it, it tells you, with all your heart. So watch this. The talk is this. If you're in a situation and you're not relying on God completely, you need to have another conversation with him. Because if, if there's any room for doubt in your heart, you're not going to receive from God. Let not that man think he shall receive anything from God. For a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So when I find myself in a place where I need God to move in my life, but I'm not trusting him, I need to have another talk. Come on, somebody. I need to trust. Why? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Here's the, here's, here's the important thing. And lean. This is where we, this is where we struggle at. We struggle here. You know why? Because we forget what he told us. When you start leaning to your own, it means that somehow or another, the plan that God has for you is not working out as quick or as skillfully as you like. And so now you begin to lean on your own thoughts, your own suggestions, and your own ways. And the Bible says, and lean not to thine own He said, if you do that in all thy ways, if you acknowledge him, see, this is important, the talk. You might not have a father, but there God is telling, telling you something. Stop trusting people and trust me. Don't trust that man. Trust me. That man can't do for you like I can. Tell, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, can nobody do you like Jesus? And if they say they can, make them prove it. If, if, a, if a man or, or somebody in their life is like, listen, I'm better than them. Say, prove it. Prove to me that you're better than God. And guess what? They can't do it. I'm not going to give my, my obvious, my worship, my loyalty, my time, all of it to any person. My trust is going to be in God. So my trust is in him. 
So this is the talk now. This is the talk you got to have. This is the talk that fathers have to have with their children. Listen, when you leave, when you leave my home, don't trust strangers. Don't get into leagues with people you don't know. Once you leave this house, you're on your own. So be careful who you trust. Don't just trust anybody. And if you're going to start trusting somebody, trust God. Well, how much should I trust them? With everything you got. With my money? Yes, with your money, you fool. With my time? Yes, your time. With, with my purpose? Yes, with everything. Trust God with all your heart. And don't do this. Here is, I promise you, you, if you're going to trust him, you can never lean to your own understanding. And he said, watch this. Once you start trusting him, you got to be careful. Because while you're trusting him, every now, and, every now and again, you'll start leaning to your own understanding. He said, if you do that, he said, you'll miss the, you'll miss the benefit of trusting him. The benefit of trusting him in all your ways. Watch this. Don't go that way. Don't go that way. Go straight. Don't invest in that. Invest in that. Don't marry her. Marry her. Walk with me, somebody. Now ain't the time to have kids. Wait till next year. Don't buy that house. Now is not the time to buy. Uh-uh. Don't get that business. In all thy ways, he'll do what? He'll direct Doctor said I should have surgery. I hear the Lord saying, don't do it. This is the talk. I said, this is the talk. He said, the first thing about the talk, watch this. Don't forget the things that I've said to you. Number two, put your absolute trust in me. Number three, watch this. Recognize the importance of wisdom. Somebody said, recognize the importance of wisdom. Look at, look at chapter 3, verse 13 through 20. Listen, you don't want to hang around with no, no nincompoops. You want to hang around with somebody got some sense. Do I have a witness in here? I said, do I have a witness in here? 13 through 20. Look what the text says. See, he says, my son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. See, we don't want nobody telling us anything. We don't want no whippings. We don't want nobody rebuking us. We don't want no corrections. And the text is saying, look here, get it. Listen, open up, open your life up to correction. Open yourself up to rebuke, especially if God is going to rebuke you. Why? Because there's a blessing in getting rebuked. There's a blessing in getting corrected. What is the blessing? Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. The man that get his understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things that thou can desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths. So he's saying, look here, son. If there's one thing that you need to do is you need to recognize the value of great wisdom. And you want to be wise. Somebody say, I want to be wise. I want to be wise. Not in my own eyes, but I want to be wise according to God's eyes. Amen. So wisdom, that's what the Bible says. Wisdom is the principal thing. I don't want to hang around with fickle people. I don't want to be silly the rest of my life. Amen. Somebody said this is the talk. So every now and then you got to sit your children down and have a talk with them. If they ain't got no savings, if they ain't got no resources, they're silly. They need to be talked to. We got children in the place they're at because they haven't been talked to properly. And they have not been told what the consequences are. What's the benefits of wisdom? What's the benefits of being wise? Look at verse 18. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. And happy is everyone that's retained. Look here, if you pursue wisdom instead of pursuing some of the carnal things that we pursue. Girl, I was thinking about getting me a 
you know, some work done. Where? I was going to get some work done on my face and work done up here and back here and get some work done. Baby girl, listen, I know what you're trying to do, but if you get some work done in here and some work done up here, you won't have to work, have to worry about the work done back here. Because if you get the work done on the outside, it will only carry you but so far. But if you get the work done on the inside, it will carry you. See, we're so busy focusing on the external. And he said you should want to be wise. And watch this. You don't become wise running your mouth. You become wise listening. If you're still talking too much, guess what? You can't get wise. Wise people do a lot of listening. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. And happy is everyone that retain her. Verse 19. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth by understanding hath established the heavens. Verse 20. By his, by his knowledge the depths are broken up. Look, he said, if you want to be God smart, get wise. Get into the class where you can get wise. And he said, if you get in that class, he said, you're going to know things that God knows. He said, you're going to be God-like. If you, if you aspire, if you desire wisdom, if you seek it like his pearls, he said, then you shall grab a hold of it. And watch this. It shall be like an ornament around your neck. Do I have a witness in here? I'd rather have an ornament of wisdom around my neck than a, a $5,000 suit any day of the week. Do I have a witness in here? Number four. Look at, look at Proverbs 3 and 21. I'm sorry. Look at uh, Proverbs chapter 3 and 25, 25 and 26. In the conversation you have with your children, God is telling us, don't be afraid. Somebody say, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Sometimes you got to tell yourself that. Interview, you got to tell yourself what you're scared of. What you're scared of? You're scared of taking that test. What you're scared of? Don't be afraid. Oh, the doctor told you that, that they saw something. So what? Don't be afraid. You know how I many people were diagnosed with the same thing you're being afraid of? Don't be afraid. You know how I many people didn't die last year from the thing that they're telling you got? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the unknown. He said, be not afraid of sudden fear. Think, look, not afraid of something, but just afraid of fear anyway. Just, just afraid. And that's something walking around healthy but afraid, worried about the, the roof is about to cave in. And God is telling us, well, you have to talk. Because some of us, watch this, we deal with anxiety. We deal with depression. We deal with all sorts of issues. Why? Because we never got our hearts right from the beginning. And so fear can just jump on us. And confusion can just jump on us. And he says, if sudden fear hits you, if it attacks you, he said, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. Verse 26. Why? Because the Lord shall be your confidence. Y'all going to make me get out of here. I said, it's about time, Mikiri, go home. I'm going to cut cross. Can I cut cross the field? Say, look at your name. Say, neighbor. Say, neighbor. Do you know the Lord loved you this morning? Do you know the Lord come here to bless you real good? Say, I've come here this morning to give God my best. I've come here to give God the best Father Day pleasant he could ever get. Do I have a witness in here? Somebody say, I've come here this morning to give my Father the blessing that he deserves. He told me I should never fear. Why shouldn't I fear? There's a reason why he shouldn't, I shouldn't fear. He tells me why I shouldn't fear. He says because he, he was going to give me confidence. And he said in that confidence that my foot shall not be moved. I wish I had a witness in here. Say neighbor. Oh neighbor. The reason why I'm not afraid 
is because God said that no matter what comes against me, no matter the storm that rises, my foot shall not be moved. So I got a good witness in here this morning. No hell shall rise against me. No storm shall rise against me. I shall not be moved. I ain't going nowhere until it's my time. I wish I had a church this morning, a praising church this morning. Say, neighbor, oh, neighbor, the reason why I don't fear is because God got my back. He said he'll protect me. He's my keeper. He'll do for me what I can't do for myself. I'll fear no man. Do I have a witness in here? The person who fears the Lord cannot be wise. I wish I had a witness in here. When you fear the Lord, it is the beginning of wisdom. Tell your neighbor, I got wisdom. I got blessings. And the Bible says, if I got financial problems, if I take what I possess and bring it to God, he says, son, and most of us in here haven't gotten this lesson. He said, if your finances are messed up, you need to have a talk because I own all the silver and I own all the gold. He said, come have a talk with me. He said, honor the Lord with thy substance, with the first fruit of thy increase. You understand what I'm saying? He said, let's have a talk. If your money is funny and your change is strange, let's have a talk. He said, honor me with your money. Give, and it shall be given back to you in good measure. Press down, shake it together, and run it over. He'll cause men to give unto your bosom. Whenever we stop giving, it's because our hearts have wandered somewhere else. Our hearts and our affections have wandered with it. But if we turn from our wicked ways, that's what the Bible says. Hear my cry, O Lord. Attend unto my plea. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. Do I have a witness in here? If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn and turn and turn and turn from their wicked ways. How can God bless your money when the only person you honor with your money is your rent man? Your rent man and the mortgage man. You honor him more than anybody. You honor the seamstress. You honor your hairdresser. You honor the nail person. But you never honor God. Do I have a witness in here? I wish I had some help here. You need to talk again. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn. The reason I got money in my pocket this morning because I trust the Lord with my money. I worship him with my money. When I get it, he gets it. If he gives it, I give it. If he don't give it, I can't give it. But when he gives it, I give it back. And when you give it back, he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, all. Oh, yeah. And that's why every now and then when the Lord checks me, has anybody been checked by the Lord? The Bible says, don't despise the Lord's chastisement. Don't despise the correction of the Lord. Why? Why? Why should I not despise it? Tell your neighbor there's a reason. There's a reason that I don't despise the correction of the Lord. Because that identifies if the Lord corrects me, that means he loved me. But if I can get away with anything that's a dangerous place to be, I'm glad 
every now and again, he snatches me. He pulls me, jerks me, whatever he has to do. Do I have anybody here like that? Has God ever had to jerk you, jack you up, yes, sir. stop you in your tracks, yes, sir. mess you all up? You couldn't go anywhere anymore. And you said, oh, my God, how am I going to get out of this mess? He said, don't worry. If I would have let you keep going, your life would have been over. This ain't nothing but a small mess. Clean it up and get back on the horse. I'm glad that the Lord chastises me. Because whom the Lord chastises, he loveth. Open your mouth and give God a praise. I said I'm glad. I said I'm glad. I'm glad. May the Lord God bless you real good. But if I had ten reasons to give God praise on Father's Day. Ten reasons. I said if you gave me ten reasons to give God praise on Father's Day. And may the Lord bless you real good. The first reason I praise him is because he woke me up this morning. Say that. The second reason why I give him praise is because he woke me up this morning. Say that. The third reason why I give him praise is because he woke me up this morning. I hear you, Bishop. The fourth reason why I give him praise is because he woke me up this morning. The fifth reason why I give him praise is because he woke me up this morning. Yes, sir. The sixth reason why I open up my mouth and give him a crazy praise is because he will be up this morning. Yes, sir. The seventh reason while I open up my mouth yeah. and you can't shut me up is because he won't be up this morning. Yeah. The eighth reason yes, is because he won't be up. Won't be the up. ninth reason because he won't be up. Ah, yeah. And the tenth reason I said because he woke me up. Ah, yeah. And if he woke me up, yes, sir. he made a way out of no way. Yes, Lord. Preach, man. Do I have anybody in here? Yes, sir. I said, do I have anybody in here? Well, you got a top ten list yes, sir. of why uh, you give God praise. Yes, sir. You give him praise because he's a progenitor. The progenitor means he created you. I'm here by divine design. Yes. Somebody open up their mouths yes, and say, God, God is my progenitor. my progenitor. I have the seed, have the seed of, Abraham. of Abraham. Say, yeah. yeah. I can give God praise yes, sir. this morning yes, sir. because he's my protector. Yes, sir. Open up your mouth oh, and bless the Lord bless because he's been your protector. Yes, sir. Danger, yeah. seen, and unseen. And unseen. Yeah. They, yeah. though I walk the through the valley yes, sir. of the shadow of death, well, Lord, I'm fear no evil. Yeah. Body, I don't know how many times we've been in that shadow. We've been in and out. And the constant thing about being in the shadow, I don't fear. Because the Lord, the Lord, my God, is with me. If I had another reason to praise him, I praise him because he's the lifter of my head. He woke me up this morning. The old folks used to say, and he started me on my way. He didn't let me sleep too late. Jesus woke me up on time. He woke me up. Yeah, yeah. Me up yes, sir. this morning yes, sir. and it started oh. me on my way. Oh. The, Lord, yeah. the Lord, the Lord is blessing yes, me. Sir. When? Right now. Right now. Right now. Say yeah. yeah. May the Lord, the Lord bless you. Real good. Real. Yes, sir. Real. Real. Good. Yeah. Say yeah. yeah. And I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him for the talk that my daddy couldn't have with me. I'm going to praise him for the talk that no human being could have with me. He told me, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. I wish I had a witness in here. 
the Bible records in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 for without faith it's impossible to please God but he that cometh to God must first believe that he is a rewarder open up your mouth and say your God is a rewarder I praise him because he's rewarded me he's blessed me above my own he's blessed me more than the others somebody say he's a rewarder open up your mouth and give God praise for rewarding your life with peace Yes, sir. Prosperity, yes, sir. Joy, joy, this unspeakable yeah. and full of glory. glory. Come on and give him praise glory. for the reward yes, sir. of long life. Yeah. He said, I'll satisfy you yes, sir. with long life. Oh, Open up your mouth oh, if you've been rewarded. I've been rewarded. I got a suit on. Yes, sir. He rewarded me. Yes, sir. I got a car out there. Oh, yeah. He rewarded me. Oh. I got a congregation. Jesus, he sir. rewarded me. Well, I got life. Yes, sir. I got more abundantly, more abundantly. than he rewarded me. Yeah, Open up your mouth oh. on Father's Day yeah. and give the Father. Give his glory. The Father. I give you glory. The Bible says yes, sir. every good and, perfect and every perfect gift yes, sir. come from above. Yes, it does. Come on and give your Father oh, Lord. for giving you perfect gifts. Thank you, Jesus. For giving you good gifts. Thank you. That you ain't got to take back. Thank you. That's not distorted. Yes, sir. Open up your mouth Thank you, Lord. for the perfect salvation. Oh, yeah. Open up your mouth Thank you, Jesus. for the perfect grace you got. Well, Lord. Open up your mouth oh, yeah. for the perfect healing you got. Yes, sir. Say yeah. yeah, say yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I better get to my seat. I'm gonna give God yes, sir. one more praise. Sign, I'm gonna praise him, praise him for who he is. Yes, sir. I'm gonna praise him praise. because he loves me. Yes, sir. I'm gonna praise him say so. for giving me this talk. Oh, Lord. I'm thankful yes, sir. for this talk. Yes, sir. And whenever, whenever. I get in a pickle, well, Lord. I'm reminded Preach, man. of this talk. Preach. It's a continuous dialogue reaffirming who he is in my life yes sir he's god, god. he's alpha, alpha. And, omega. and omega the beginning yes sir and the end and the, end. the first oh. and, the and the last somebody say yeah yeah they call his name jesus, jesus. the great emancipator yes sir. the great liberator yes sir. the great i am, great I, am. I had a talk well, the old folks used to say, say just, a little, talk just with a little talk with jesus tell him all your troubles Ooh. he'll hear you when you're crying yes, sir. he'll answer Bye and bye. And bye. I need a talk. I need a talk. When I get lonely, yes, sir. I, need a talk. I need a talk. When I feel bad, yeah. I need a talk. Yeah. When I'm despairing, oh. I need a talk. Yes, sir. And there's victory yeah. in the word of God. In the word. Victory, victory in the word. In the word. Be not deceived. Yeah. Whatsoever yes. a man soweth, shall that he shall he reap. Yes, sir. If you sow seeds. Oh, Lord. In the spirit, yeah. in the spirit, you'll preach, reach life. Preach. Open up your mouth. Yes, sir. It's reaping time. Yeah, Lord. Reaping may endure for a night. For a night. Yeah. But joy. But joy. 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 Oh, yeah. Come in the morning. Yeah, Lord. How? Oh. Yeah. It's Father's Day. Yes, sir. I said it's Father's Day. Yes, sir. He deserves. Yeah. I said he deserves. He deserves. A happy Father's Day. Yeah. Wave at him. Yeah. Give him a wave off him. Hallelujah. Come oh. on and give God. Give a, give a shout of praise. Thank you. Yes, sir. For another day. Yeah, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. That I can see out of my eyes. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. That I can still taste my food. Yes, sir. Thank you. Whoa. That my limbs still work. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That my heart still beats. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. That somebody still love me. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That if I die tonight, yes, sir. you'll take me home. Yeah, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. For being a father. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Say yeah. yeah. Say yeah. yeah. Glory, 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 my Lord. On 
Father's Day. On Father's Day. You preaching, Doc? What a word, what a word, what a word. You might not have had that talk with your biological father. But God is talking today. He said, the reason you've had trouble is because you forgot what I told you. You didn't put it where it needed to be. He said, write it on your heart. Yes, sir. Write it on your front lips. He said, so that you can see it wherever you went. Don't forget what you've learned. I, I, you're here. When, you know, it's like people that have had good credit, bad credit, good credit. I've been there. But once your credit get good, you should never want to get bad again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, that's right. Good marriage, bad marriage, good man, good man, bad woman. Hey, once you get out of it, you should never be caught Don't in another back. bad relationship again. Why? Why? Because of the pain, <laughs> the pain and all of the <laughs> insight and experience you gained from that last joker. Glory. That you realize you're not going to put up with that with nobody else. Oh, bless God. No matter what they're riding on. But what, what surprises me is that we get sometimes we get stupid and act like all the trash and garbage we've been through with men and women, somehow it don't exist. And we're standing here with Joe Knuckleheads looking right at us. And he's saying the same thing all them dumb guys said before. And so, so now all of a sudden, we act like we don't have a past. Like, I can't judge him by them. That's not fair. No, ain't nobody talking about judging him. We're talking about judging you. We mean judging you. You are the one to keep making bad choices. Mm. You have to look at your own self. You. You. Not him. You. Oh, talk to him. Bishop, you talk. No, no, no. No, we need to talk to him. He right where he need to be. No, somebody need to talk to you. You need to talk. I'm thankful for the Lord this morning yes, for this talk. Glory. That he can still minister to us. Yeah. Even when we don't have fathers, he can still tell us yeah. how we should act what we should do, how we should treat other people. He said, don't envy anybody. He said, don't, en don't hate on other people. He said, find somebody you could do good with. These are principle, life principles that should drive us. If you do the opposite, you're going to get the consequences. Yes, sir. I don't want the consequences. Woe is a man that fall into the hand of an angry God. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Neither does he stand in the way of sinners, nor does he sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in that law, he doth meditate both day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. But the ungodly are not so. They are like the chaff. That the wind dry up and the wind blow it away. And the evil shall not, shall not have the same reward as the righteous. Clear. No clearer in, in Psalms chapter 1. There's a blessing for those that do right. And there are consequences for those that do wrong. Let's just have a talk. Don't say you're confused. You're confused because you're not, you're not having the right talk. If your life is disoriented, it's because you're talking to the wrong people. Your ears are open to the wrong suggestions. You need to have a right talk so you can get yourself back together. It was the talk that got me here. I realized my life had become it spiraled out of control. It was all the collective conversations about Jesus being a way maker that drew me back to the cross. And I'm here and I ain't going nowhere. And whenever, whenever my life feels that it's missing something, I remind myself of the talk. The talk. 
I convinced myself of the talk that this is my daddy telling me all over again that it's going to be all right if I just follow the path of the righteous. It says, mark the path of the perfect man for the end of his days are peaceful. Amen. Father, have your way in this place. We thank you for the patience of your people. We're here. It's 130. We should have been gone already, but we thank you for the grace on Father's Day. We thank you for the blessings that make us rich and add no sorrow. We thank you for healing us where we hurt. We thank you for the challenges that we've had with our biological fathers, with our foster uh, care fathers, with all the different people that wore hats that we thought was our fathers, that never wore our fathers. Heal us right now about daddy issues. Heal us and deliver us, God, so we can't be exploited anymore by the enemy. Help us see. Give us a sense of discernment where we fall short, where we miss the mark. And then, God, when we these issues rise back up, let us go back to Psalm. Let us go back to Proverbs chapter 3 and read it intently and get some information, insight, then we can get healed and get delivered. Help us, God. Help us have this talk with our children, our grandchildren. Not, all, not philosophy, not humanism, but this talk, the word of the living God that is able to save their soul. This talk. When the Father's not there, don't blame him, don't blame, don't blame this for on generational curses. Just have to talk with them. The talk will straighten them out. We give you thanks. We give you praise in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Come on and bless him with your hands if you can. All of your ways. You're perfect in all of your ways. You are. Yeah. You're a good, good father. Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. We thank and praise God for the word, oh God. Thank you that you spoke to us today, Lord. Thank you, Father, that we heard your word and we trust, Lord, that those who heard, oh God, responded inwardly to that calling that you compelled us, oh God. We pray, Father, right now, if there's anyone, Lord Jesus, that have a desire to grow closer to you that don't know you, whether they're physically here in this sanctuary or whether they're online, oh God, viewing via Facebook Live, we ask, Father God, that they commit themselves unto you, Father, in the name of Jesus. If there's someone online that have heard the message and want to give their life to the Lord, you can send a message, amen, and put that message in on Facebook Live. If you're here in the sanctuary and don't know Christ as your Savior and you want to just slip your hands up and we'll just pray for you, that's okay. Hallelujah. Perhaps you are you know the Lord and maybe you just slipped away for a little bit and you just want to rededicate or recommit yourself unto the Lord. We're still here trusting and believing God for you're you. Good, good that God will keep you. Hallelujah. It's amen. You amen. 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 We thank and praise God for each of you. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to prepare our hearts to give. If you need an envelope, you can slip your hands up and our ushers will be happy to give you an envelope. Perhaps you already have connected with us by giving online through text. Amen. And we thank and praise God for those of you who give via text that goes right into your records here at New Life Christian Fellowship. Amen. We don't have to take the envelope and transfer the money, but we thank and praise God for the gifts that God has laid upon your heart to sow into the work of this ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. Those of you who give online, if you have a desire to submit your reoccurring offering, there's a tool also on there where you can submit your reoccurring tithes and offerings. The same amount. Just wanted to remind you of that. Ushers, you may serve the people. Hallelujah.
Let us stretch our hands towards the offering basket. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, that you have blessed us by opening up windows in heaven, oh God, because we have given unto you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for rebuking the devourer off of our lives, oh God. Thank you for the fruit we have, that we will have it to be reproduced, oh God, that it will sow and it will continue to increase, oh God. For these offerings that your people have given, not just 30, not just 60, but 100 fold. And even those who are yet giving online, we thank you and we praise you, God. May we take these resources and allocate them and distribute them to the work of the ministry and the building of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Just a few announcements. Hallelujah. Just want to remind you all, thank you for those who are visiting with us out on Facebook for the first time. We thank and praise you for being a part of this service. We thank and praise you. I think we have one visitor in here, a first-time visitor with us. Yeah, we see you. Amen. Or oh, two visitors. Stand up and be recognized. Amen. Amen. How'd you Amen. Find out about us? Hallelujah. How'd you, How'd you find you... out about us? Who? I can't see him. Let me stop. Right. <laughs> oh, that's wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. This my man here. We've been, this my man here. Look how clean he is. Thank you for coming. All of you. Come on, baby. I will bless the Lord. He said you got more coming. I will bless the Lord. And how did you find out? Online. Whose face did you see? Okay, sorry. We're so glad to have you. Did you enjoy yourself? Did you enjoy yourself? You're going to come back? Good. Amen. Amen, amen. It's good because you all could have went to any church, but you chose to come here. So on behalf of our pastor, Bishop Dr. Robert L. Register and his wife, Lady Silla, we thank you all for being a part of this day. And we hope that something was said or done or shared or inspired with you that you will come back and join us. Amen. We thank and praise God again for all the offerings and those of you who have given offerings to support the work of this ministry because it is through your free will tithes and offerings that we're able to be a blessing to the people of this house. And on yesterday, on yesterday we had a wonderful acknowledgement and blessing of our fathers and we took them to Top Golf. So all the dads, amen. All you fathers, did y'all have a good time? Yeah. As Bishop said, he was number one. Were you number one in the Top Golf? on yesterday so we thank and praise God for that we want to remind you all that we have our wow zoom meetings every first and third Friday at 7 our next meeting is going to be in July is that the we will not meet on the first Friday in July we know some people are traveling during that weekend so we will not meet on the first Friday in July, amen, hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the announcements. Bishop, the benediction. Hey. Hey. Little, little dancing is what we leave out here. So you leave church happy. Leave church happy. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. That's it. I will bless the Lord. 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 From me, so I will. He has done great things for me, so I will. He has done. He, he has, has done great things for me, so. He has done great things. He has done great things. For me. He, has great he has done great. He has done great things for me. He has done great things for me. He has done great things for me. He has done great. That's time. He has done great things for me, so I.
Bishop, get it, Bishop, get it, Bishop, get it. I get it, I get it. Get it, Bishop. Happy Father's Day. Amen. We, we're in overtime now. Somebody said we're in overtime. How many glad they came to church today? Father of glory, writer of our story, we thank you for, for stopping by 1321 Providence Road in Brandon, Florida. Thank you for stopping by this edifice and ministering to us, to our needs, and even to our wants. Thank you that even our wants have not embarrassed you. We've come today, God, to give you glory. No devil, no witch on earth stopped us. We are victorious in you. We believe by faith that we can do all, do all things to Christ. Now I release the blessing of God upon the people that are in this building under the sound of my voice. I release the blessing of God upon your life that will make you rich and add no sorrow. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent. Father, now unto him who is able to keep each of us from falling. He alone has the power to present each of us faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, to be majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remind you, you'll have, you'll have more daddy issues if you won't have that talk. Your daddy issues will cease if you have that talk. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Make sure you greet somebody before you leave. We love you. God bless you.